What's going on, guys? Nick Lessigore here. Brandon Delakia. Exit 12. Brewery. In the house. Mm. And that we are. Today, we brewed our first competition beer ever. Yep. Uh, Brandon and I have been doing this. I've been doing this for about three, four years. Brandon in the two range. Yep. And we have been uh, refining our process this whole time. And we decided to finally do a beer and enter a competition with it. Uh, we'll give you guys more information after the competition ends. Yeah. So, yeah. But uh, we're really excited about it. So uh, in the meantime, we just got done brewing the beer. And uh, we're waiting to go on and do another podcast with uh, Plato's Gravity about our Primo Sni, which is yeah. our uh, Anisette Cookie Belgian Dark Strong Ale. But in the meantime, let's have a beer. Absolutely. And let's have one that Brandon has never had to I this know. point. I know. Uh, if you guys remember, I did a video uh, of my brew day of a uh, Comet Smash, and this would be it. Yeah. So basically, we are going to drink this and give notes, as we do with all of our first taste videos. Yeah, that's, that's about what we do. Yeah. Drink um, and give notes. So we definitely did some uh, water additions. Do you want to talk about that? Sure. Um, yeah, uh, I'll have to look at the notes, but we definitely had, uh, I think our chloride to sulfate ratio was two to one on this beer, I believe. Um, you know, that's pretty much par for the course for most of our pale ales and IPAs. Uh, us being from New England, we like to uh, accentuate that malt character. Yeah, with this water profile, we definitely wanted to go more uh, chloride to sulfate. I think the ratio was two to one. Um, but yeah, yeah, really accentuate that, you know, that nice round mouthfeel, hopefully not as much because we want to be flaked adjuncts in our smash beers or they would not be smash beers. That's very correct. Uh, taking a look at it, very clear, yep. which I love. Uh, I don't know if you can see me doing the whole finger test, mm. but uh, I actually took a pretty sweet picture a couple days ago of the beer next to my laptop and you could see right through so much so you could see the logo on the glass on the other side, which was pretty cool. Yeah, so we used Irish Moss in this, I believe, correct? You used Irish Moss? Yeah, and we cold crashed. Yep. yep. Uh, so we cold crashed in my basement, which is partially finished, so it still gets very cold down there. And I just put it down there, let it sit for two days, and voila. Yeah. So Good thing being from New England in the winter. It actually works for us. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's get a little uh, sniff sniff. <laughs> So strong grapefruit on the nose, um, like grapefruit rind. Yeah, I get a nice, like a really nice tangerine or a mango. Yeah, yeah I can see that. Definitely that sweetness of the malt mm -hmm. backbone on the on the tail end. I think. Yeah, yeah. But this con the comet hop, I think, is perfect for like a New England IPA. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm getting a lot of grapefruit on the nose. A lot, a lot of grapefruit, um, which is part of the course for Comet. Um, yeah, definitely, it's got a great, great smell to it. Yeah, let's dive in. All right, cheers. 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 Salute. Gave me an old gentleman's pour here. So you get that yeah. little bit of a hot bite yeah. to some degree. Uh, it's actually calmed down quite a bit since we, uh, since I last had it, mm -hmm. but, um, so yeah. we did uh yeah, what is it? Two ounce dry hop, um, which was bah, 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 two days in. Yes. Yeah. So two days in during high crossing. And we also whirlpooled for 15 minutes with an ounce. Yeah. yeah. So you're definitely getting a lot of those flavors coming through. Uh, you know, it probably, what'd you say, about a week ago, it's probably too green and you're getting a little bit of that hot burn. It's still there, it's still a little spicy, um, but it has subdued, it has a nice floral flavor, like a, a juice um, backbone to A little it. bit, yeah. Yeah, and I, and I think, so we, we hopped this very similar to New, a New England IPA, so I didn't add any hops until 10 minutes in, left in the boil. Uh, and then I did an ounce of the Comet, and then uh, as I said, at flame out, I did an ounce, and then at uh, 100, 15 minutes at 160 degrees, whirlpool, I did an ounce, so that's three ounces, and then again, we did the two ounces at high crossing. Yeah. So uh, you definitely get 
the hop character on it for sure. I think it's uh, <laughs> well, four point three percent it ended up being. So we didn't attenuate out as high as I would have liked, but we also had over six gallons in the mm -hmm. fermenter. So there was a chance I probably maybe I should have pitched a second thing of yeast, but uh, for you know. I called it a session, and it's definitely very sessionable. Yeah, or uh, you know, something we were talking about in 2019 is we want to get into you know learning more about yeast starters. We have all the equipment. We just really haven't had too many beers that that needed it, but maybe you know maybe something like this would have helped. Uh, we usually attenuate pretty high, so we wouldn't have known that you know until until after when we we're doing our notes. So uh, the malt character on this is is very clean. Um, you get a little sweetness, but that Great Western, you know, doesn't really overpower the hot flavor. Um, I think I think you know it's it's getting right to where it's drinking the best. I think in about a week or two, you know, even more that uh, that hot burn will will go away. But it's definitely a little still there. It's definitely a little uh, I'll call it spicy. Yeah, for sure. And, and I think the hops definitely overpower the malt uh, to a large degree. Uh, again, it's just a single malt, so it's not something that's going to be really complex and, and, you know, overwhelming in some aspects. But I think overall it was, uh, I mean, it was a solid experiment. I don't, sure. know if, I don't know if I would ever brew this beer again, the specific smash, but I definitely think it's interesting moving forward. Uh, and personally, I think when we used our locally sourced Valley Turo for the first couple smashes that we did, I think we had better results overall. I think you got more of a sweetness. Sure, yeah, I definitely, I definitely agree that that Valley, um, that Valley Turo had a little, little more character to it than than this. Um, but there's something to be said about a Turo that just sort of like, you know, gives it a nice, you know, finishing flavor, but doesn't really overpower everything else. Clean, like you said. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but that'll be it. We are going to go on with Plato's Gravity, do a, an episode, and uh, we'll be back hopefully soon at some point, whether it's a brew day or yeah. a beer tasting or whatever. Absolutely. And uh, that's about it. Anything else to add? No. Cheers. Cheers.